Hello Grade Tens and welcome to today's lesson, Revising Lines and Angles. In today's lesson, we will be revising some very important definitions. Oh no, not definitions, I hear you say. But wait, let us join Eloise once again and see why it is so important to know our definitions when working with Euclidean geometry. Today, we start straight away with these learners dressed as people doing different jobs. What do these jobs have in common? Look carefully. Did you notice that all these people have special tools that they use for their job? Whatever the job, people need the tools of their trade in order to carry out their tasks. And maths is no different. We also have tools which we use all the time. But most of the tools needed for maths are in our heads. The tool we use again and again is the knowledge of maths we already have. The facts on which we base our reasoning and conclusions. In the last lesson we saw that Euclidean geometry is about points, lines and shapes on a plane or flat surface. These give us practical mathematical tools with which to calculate things like the area of land or the volume of a structure. It also develops our skills in logical thinking and reasoning so that we can solve many of the problems we come across in life. And the starting point for using these tools is to know and understand definitions. We must make sure that we all have the same understanding of something before we can start making statements about it. Here's an example of a misunderstanding involving a quadrilateral and a parallelogram. Huh? What do you mean it's a parallelogram? None of these sides look parallel to me. You're right. I should have called it a uh, quadrilateral. Mm. Gerard made the mistake because he was not sure of the definition of a parallelogram until Rafilwe reminded him. But there's something else about definitions that make it all the more important to know and understand them. There can be several different definitions for the same thing. Take a look at this example. This is the Mohale family gathering. And this is Bob. To Precious, he is a husband. But to Joy and George, he is a father. Yet to Madala Mohale, he is a son. And to Jeff, he is a brother. There you saw several definitions for Bob and all are correct. We will see later that polygons can also be defined in different ways like this. The next tools we commonly use in Euclidean geometry are theorems. Theorems are statements that can be proved to be true. Euclid shows that the truth of each statement follows logically from the truth of other statements and previously proven theorems. For example, you know that the sum of the angles of a triangle is 180 degrees. This is a theorem. It's a statement that can be proved to be true for all triangles in a number of ways. Here's another example. If you draw any rectangle and measure its diagonals, you will find that the diagonals have the same length. That fact can be shown to be true for all rectangles. Again, this makes it into a theorem. In his book, Elements, Euclid included over 300 theorems that were already known in his day. And a theorem, once proved, can be used to help prove another theorem. Thus, a theorem becomes a tool in itself. And that's why it's so important to know your definitions. We will work with theorems throughout the series. Today we will revise these definitions and terminology which you should have learned in previous grades. This is the terminology we will use when talking about lines. Line segment, ray, parallel lines, perpendicular lines, bisecting lines, equidistant, intersection, transversal. We will also look at definitions related to angles such as angle, arm, 
degree, adjacent angles, acute angle, right angle, obtuse angles, straight angle, reflex angle, revolution, complementary angles, supplementary angles, vertically opposite angles. Wow, that's a lot to learn. Don't be overwhelmed. We have a plan to help you learn and understand them all. Before we begin working through these definitions, let us quickly spy on Rifile, who has some very important information to share with us. Hey, what you up to? My geometry homework, but it's taking forever because I keep having to look things up. Can I give you a tip? I learned it from my uncle. It will save time and help with your geometry all the way till grade 12. Please, G, I need all the help that I can get. First, you need an A4 exercise book with at least 72 lined pages. It has to be a book, not sheets of paper like this. This will become your geometry theory book, which you can take from grade to grade until you leave school. How's that going to help me? Well, every time you learn something new in geometry, mm -hmm. you can write it down in this book. And you can even use illustrations and diagrams, you know, to help you remember the things that you learned. Then you keep a glossary at the back if you need to. What's a glossary? It's a bit like a dictionary, a list of words and their meanings. And leave the first two pages open. You can use them as content pages, you know, index pages. And you can add to your content the more you write in your book. Keep a book like this starting now. And then in grade 11 and 12, you can use it to revise. Thanks, G. That sounds like a great idea. Hmm. A valuable bit of advice for all of you. Keep a notebook like that and it will become an important tool for your geometry. I hope you have one ready now, or at least a pen and paper. To make sure you keep up and that you have time to write all the definitions down correctly and draw the diagrams, I suggest that you pause the video after each explanation. Each term is also discussed in the series guide called A Guide to Euclidean Geometry. Let's begin with the terminology for lines. A line segment is a section of a line that is bound by two definite points. That means a line segment has a starting point and an end point. The parts beyond A and B are not included in the line segment. A line with a starting point but no end is known as a ray. Think of a ray of sunshine. Parallel lines are two lines that are equidistant at all points along the line and they never intersect. A transversal is a line that cuts two parallel lines. Perpendicular lines are two lines that meet at a 90 degree angle. A square between the two lines is the symbol used to show that the angle is 90 degrees. A bisected line occurs when a line cuts a line segment into two equal lengths or parts. In other words, it cuts the line segment in half. Points that are equidistant are an equal distance from another point. We can then say that points A and C are equidistant from point B. A point of intersection is where two lines meet or cross. I hope you are keeping up. If you spend 10 minutes every day reading over these definitions, it will become easier to remember them. And don't forget to revise daily. Now that we have revised the terminology associated with lines, let's have a look at the terminology we need to understand when working with angles. An angle is the amount of turn between two lines or arms that meet at a point. This amount of turn is measured in degrees. There are different types of angles and they are named based on their size. An acute angle is an angle that is less than 90 degrees. An angle that is exactly 90 degrees is called a right angle. An angle that is greater than or bigger than 90 degrees but less than and smaller than 180 degrees is called an obtuse angle. 
A straight angle is an angle that measures exactly 180 degrees and the two arms form a straight line. If an angle is bigger than 180 degrees but smaller than 360 degrees, it is called a reflex angle. Lastly, let's look at the revolutionary angle. This type of angle is an angle that measures exactly 360 degrees. And we say it has done a full revolution like this. Most of those angles should have been revision of work you have covered in previous grades. Let's look at some more terminology associated with angles. When two angles add up to 90 degrees, they are referred to as complementary angles. Here the complementary angles are adjacent to each other, which means they are next to each other. Adjacent angles are two angles that lie next to each other and share a common vertex and a common arm. Complementary angles are any angles that add up to 90 degrees. They don't have to be adjacent to be complementary and adjacent angles don't have to be complementary to be adjacent. Lastly, supplementary angles have a sum of 180 degrees. These angles are both supplementary and adjacent. We'll finish this lesson by looking at the rules about angles that you learned last year. Here's a theorem that you need to know. Angles on a straight line are supplementary. In other words, angle A plus angle B equals 180 degrees. Angles around a point have a sum of 360 degrees. In other words, angle A plus angle B plus angle C equals 360 degrees. And lastly, vertically opposite angles are equal in size. These angles are formed at a point of intersection of two straight lines. That wraps up all our revision on all the terminology associated with lines and angles. Don't forget to watch the task video of this series where you will explore questions using theorems. You will also find more resources on Euclidean geometry on our website www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn. Geometry is not all Greek, it's just plain English.